you go with me to Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. Beginning at the 27th verse. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord, just for the opportunity to stand before you people. Lord, remove me of myself. Take away anything that will hinder your word from coming forth as pure as gold. Lord, wash and cleanse our ears and our heart that we may receive your word as it is intended to be received. Lord, allow that word to give life to us that we will become activators of your word and that word become active in our lives and we will begin to be active in the building of the kingdom of God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for just having our back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans 8. Beginning at the... Next year I'm going to be starting at the 26th verse. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groaning. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Look to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, don't trip. It's for your good. You may be seated in the presence of God. Don't trip. It's for your good. Many of us, many of us, we we have been going through trials and tribulations in our lives. We've uh, ended up on paths in our lives that uh, from the onset or from outsiders or from people uh, who are looking at your story or looking at your life, even to you, or you look at your life through a mirror, a mirror you think that it was a path of destruction. Uh, if we just be honest with ourselves, many of us have made mistakes in our lives that put us in positions uh, that caused us to live beneath who we are. Uh, we have gone through situations in our lives wondering why we have to go through what we go through. There's been uh, many uh, people who have gone through uh, uh, family uh, disparities, family dysfunctions. You have gone through uh, situations, uh, uh, loss of jobs, loss of income. You have gone through uh, the loss or the break of a marriage or a bond in a relationship. You have uh, uh, experienced some type of loss that caused you to feel that the bad times seemed like it would never end. I, I know I'm not talking uh, to an empty room here because I know some of us, if we just be honest with ourselves, have experienced the good, the bad, and the ugly. And sometimes it seems, and most of the time, it seems like it's more ugly than Maybe I'm just talking uh, about my own story, but I know I, I've been into some situation, a season in my life where it seemed like the storm would never end in my life. From day to day, from moment to moment, from hour to hour, every time I seemed like I got my head above water, once it seemed something else came to pull me down. Every time I thought I was going to get out of this, something else happened in my life that caused me to think this was over. This will never, I'll never survive this. This is, this is my last breath, my last step, my last sight, my last. I just wish I had somebody that knew that sometimes we go 
so through some stuff that cause us to believe the bad is all we can I love, I love this passage. And Paul recognizes that there's going to be times in our lives when, when we're going to have good things happen, but there's also some times that we're going to have bad things happen. And, and sometimes we want to put all the good things on God's behalf and all the bad things on the devil's behalf. But I stop by to tell somebody that, that, that the devil ain't got nothing to do with a lot of our bad things. Sometimes the bad things got everything to do with us. Sometimes God allows bad things to happen to get our minds in the right place, to get our thoughts in the right place. Sometimes he allows us to go through a drop to get our mind right that we know better what we need to do with our money when we get it. Sometimes he allows relationships to split up because he never wanted you with that company in the first place. So he allowed you to go through a season of being hurt and being abused so that you'll learn to hate. That thing, so you get rid of that thing. Sometimes we gotta quit allowing the devil to get credit for stuff God is doing behind the scenes. Don't trip. God is still doing it for your good. Don't you know? We lose our mind and we want to change religion. We want to give up and, and go away from some things because we allow the devil to trick us to think that our bad things is because God forgot about us because God left us alone because God, I love Job's mindset. Job was a man that God loved and God and Job loved God. And so when the devil came to, to trip Job up to attack Job, Job said, yeah, no, he slayed me. Even though I'm going through, even though I lost my money, I lost my kids, my wife has lost her mind, I still going to trust God. Why? Because all things work together. All things work together. He didn't say some things. He didn't say just the good things. God is just going to do the good things in your life and the bad things you're going to have to figure out on your own. No, he said all things. Stop tripping on when all things become bad things and you worrying about how that's going to come. Let God work it out. Stop worrying about how other people are going to view your religion, review, or, 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 or look at how you stand and how you talk about God. Just talk. All things are good. Even I may be going through, all things are still good. Even though I may be having a bad day, all things are still good. Even though you might have left me all alone and you may be coming up, all things are why? Right. Because no weapon formed against me. That's a good thing. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because all things work together for the good. For those who know God. It's, there's some principles that Paul wants to teach us. He, 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 he wants to be first that, that all things, all good things, all bad things, worked together. And, 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 and the second principle is uh, if you have the mindset focused on God, if you learn to love God, then all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. See, God can't work on your behalf if you don't love him. See, sometimes we, we want God to do stuff that we ain't willing to do for him. Uh, we we want to hate on God, but yet expect him to keep blessing us with more. We want to talk bad. We don't want to show up when God requires us to show up, but we want him to show up when we require him to show up. We, 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 he wants you to love him, and when you show that you love him, there's nothing that God won't do for you because it says in his word, all things work together. So when I love God, then all things have to work together. And when I love God, then, then all this function has to come together and be good, good function. When, when, when I love God, then all things, my, my, my bills got to come together so that my money can work it out. All things will have to come together. All things, my children, have to be subjected to the God that I serve because all things work together for the good of those who love God. I love God. So all the, I expect all things to, yeah, and some folks don't understand, how is it that you just keep a positive mindset when all this negative stuff goes because all things work together for the good I already know. 
already know the secret. I already know what's going to happen. God showed me. He already promised us because we become victorious and we are already victors. And so he didn't call me a loser. He called me the head, not the tail. And so because I'm the head, I got the trip when all things look bad because I know eventually all things will flip and turn around and be good. It says, it says all things, all things, not, not some things, not, not that thing, and not the other thing, people, but it's all things. But well, what are those things? What are those things? I don't understand, Pastor. I don't understand. What do you mean all those things? I know you're not. No, oh, you're not talking about my job. Yes, that's the thing. No, you ain't talking about my marriage. Yes, that's the thing. But I just, I don't see it getting any better. I just don't see, you know, I don't have, I don't have the, the education uh, that most folks have. I don't have the, the, the upbringing that other people have. I came from the ghetto. I came from the projects. I came from a, a dysfunctional family. God says he wants to take all those things. And he's going to flip it. See, somebody's about to get a flip. I just feel it in the spirit. Somebody's going to expect the experience of flip. God is about to flip that thing. He's about to turn that negative thing on the upside down on his head, and it's going to just fall into a positive situation. He's about to take your negative story, and you're going to write a book, and it's going to become a positive example. I can't believe that. And God wants to show you that he is still God. He's still God in control. Can't you just allow him to flip your things? Stop taking something that you want to give the little things to God, but you don't want to give him all things. See, when you learn to release, all things to God. God is going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly, but then to flip it and it will still be all good. See, when you give them all of you, that's why we, we, we sing this song, I'm withholding nothing. I'm withholding nothing of God because I want him to turn everything that's in me into good. When you look at me, I want you to look at me talking about mm -hmm, good. I don't want you to look at me talking about Lord, he's looking crazy because God has turned all things good. See, see, my situation has nothing to do with where I'm going. My situation doesn't determine how I'm going to get there or what is going to become there. God has control of all things. So I don't trip on what's going on in the atmosphere. I only focus on what God promised me in his word. See, when I focus on his word, then God has nothing but to give me the good because it will flip the bad too. work together for the good for those who love him and for those who he called according to his purpose that's where we miss it see it's one thing to love God it's another thing to operate God's purpose. Amen. Operating, I see, it's easy to see. I, I love God. I love God since I was a kid. I, I, I love the story of God. I love yeah. how he made me feel when I was little. I love yeah. the fact that he kept me alive and I've been in situations where I should have been there. But I, I loved him for that. But, but when it was the point of the purpose, when <laughs> that's where I had to split some hairs with Lord, but I know what you say is my purpose, but I would rather do this. I would rather do that. But I know you called me to preach and whatnot, but I know that I've been called to be a pastor, but but I'm too young to be a pastor. I don't have all that other pastors had. And, and, and quite frankly, God, um, uh, <laughs> they don't fall hard on their pastors. You know, I'm just having a conversation by myself. I'm sorry about that. I just want you to understand. See, I, you're not the only one that has that mindset. I, Lord, I know you called me uh, uh, to, to, to do this, but I'd rather do that because that gives me more uh, notoriety. That folks will sit there and like me more. That will give me 
uh, some things to look with. You gotta understand that when you operate in the purpose of God, that little minor purpose that you think is minor is major. God will make that major great. And when you are faithful of just few things, He'll make you ruler over my. See, when you learn to just say, Lord, whatever your purpose is for me in your life, I'm gonna do it because you have called me to this purpose. And if I love you, then I'm operating according to your purpose for me in my life. And because I'm doing that, then all things work together for the good that look that see, see all things will work together when I learn to love God and when I learn to do his will. See, you can't truly say I love you when you don't do what I command you to do. See, you can't say to me I love you that every time I turn around and I look for you to be in the right position, you ain't in the right position. How do you love me? See, when we were growing up, we had friends. We would go out. Come on, I don't know by myself. We would go out and we would have our friends with a why because they got our what back. And so because you got my back, you love me, you got my back, which means if I get in trouble, you get in trouble with me. And so because we got each other's back, so God is saying, how can you love me, but every time I turn around, you don't got my back. All things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose, not your purpose. Not your will. But his purpose. Why? Because he has predestined you. When God created you, I don't know if you understand this, really haven't learned this, but when God created you, he created you for a reason. Yes. <laughs> Nobody was created for just happenstance because he was bored up there and didn't have nothing else to do. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and create a lyric for this. I ain't got nothing else to do with my life. I ain't got nothing else to do with time. Let me just go ahead and play this game here. No, he created for a purpose and he put that purpose in you not only did he create you for the purpose and he predestined you which means he's already prepared you to live that purpose which means he's also prepared the world for your purpose everything that's going to support your purpose has already been created all you got to do is get to that position of living your purpose because i want all things to work together and the only way that all things work together is when I'm doing what God will for my life. I, I, I wish I just had a few people that understood how that all things work together because I'm living what God has called me to do because I love God. See, love is my motivation for living my purpose. And when I live my purpose, the reward is that all things work together for the good. See, when I live what God is doing and what God has called me to do, I don't have to worry about is going to be. I ain't got to worry about how this bill goes. I don't have to worry about who likes me and who don't. I don't have to worry about that. I'll be honest with you. I sleep like a baby, but I'll tell you. I snore. I get my little comfort on because why? I already know all things is working together for the good. For those God foreknew. He already knew. For those he foreknew, that means he, he knew you before you knew yourself. He knew you before you was created. Before he, he knew you, he, he had already predestined and conformed everything to the image of God and everything to the image of the Son. So, so, so what is this saying, Pastor? It's because I should look like Jesus Christ. The reason why some of us are not looking like Christ is because we have allowed the world to cause us to have spiritual plastic surgery. We have allowed the world to change our image on what a Christ, a Christian, is supposed to look like. We, we want to think, oh, what the Bible says, we should come as we are. I find that in the Bible. But I just want you to know what the Word says is that you should be conformed to the image of His Son because He had already predestined that to happen. And so you shouldn't say that, ah, you can't judge me because the Bible said don't judge. Well, that's half true. We shouldn't judge you unless we're going to be judged the same way. And some of us who know, I, I done did what I did and I already got saved and I already got healed and I got delivered and God has corrected me and, and made me to the point where I can give you some tools and some ideas on how to get out of your mess because I was in that mess too. See, see, I'm not judging you, but I'm going to help correct you uh, because I need you to stop allowing these plastic surgeons to spiritually manipulate you to where you start looking more like the world than more like Jesus Christ. We are so concerned that we want curves, we want we want to flatten, we, we think the ideal person of beauty is somebody that's slim, got a coke bottle, a figure, got muscles, and a six pack. The, the, the beauty has to do with the inside, and I met some, 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 some uh, 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 coke bottles that got an ugly inside. 
some six pack pack that just ain't you know just flat just you open it up no fears just, you have to start looking for the image of Christ you were called God created you not to be the world what they have the image? What is the image? The image is love. That's right. I put on the, the image of love. When, when I look like Christ, everything about me says love. Yes. And why? It becomes easy because I already know all things is working. So you can act bad, but good is going to happen. That's right. Bad can happen, can come, but eventually, at some point, God is going to flip that thing yes. and turn it to good. You know, some of us, we, we've had situations in our lives that, that we testify right now. We'd be able to be able to testify on how God operated in a bad situation. And that person on your job, it was treating you bad. It was acting crazy. But because you held your stance and you just kept loving them, I hope they then God flipped that thing and now they're your friend. All things were I mean, I had a bully that, that wanted to fight me and we got into a fight. And I had to tell them, well, we're going to fight every day until we... Uh, get tired of become friends and we became best friends because we got tired of fighting each other because all things works together Amen. for good. Amen. All things according to his purpose. Yes. Amen. We've been predestined to look like Christ. Yes. To act like Christ. Amen. We've been called this is the part I love. Everyone that's been called of God has been justified. You should be answering the phone when God calls you. Because when he calls you, he's trying to justify you. Yes. See, when you are called of God, you don't have to justify. You don't have to give folks a whole lot of ammunition against you. You don't have to tell people why you doing stuff. You don't have to, or why you do that, why you feel that way, because of God. That's it. God justified it. I, everything that I do is because of God. Why you allow people to use you because God is using them to test to see if I'm going to trip or if I'm going to believe that all things will work together for the good. I don't have to justify myself. And I'm so happy because if it was up to me to justify who I am, I'd mess it up every time. But all things work together because he called you. And because he called you, it says he's going to justify you. And for those he justified, he glorifies. Yes. That means God is lifting you up. Yes. Amen. God has washed you. Yes. No matter how bad your situation is. No matter how bad you think you messed up, no matter how bad or how ugly you thought that you got, God said, I'm going to wash you. And I'm going to justify you. When I justify you, although you were supposed to be found guilty, they're going to find you innocent. Yeah. And after I finish uh, 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 proving that you are innocent, I'm going to lift you up. And your 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 ladder is gonna be better. better. Your life today is gonna be twice as better. It's, it's gonna be mm -mm good. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God glorified you. Yes. See, men will glorify you, and it's for a temporary thing. Because as soon as they don't like you, as soon as you don't do what they want you to do, then they try to kill you, persecute you. But when God glorifies you, no weapon forms against you. Can you. Right. Amen. When God glorifies you, you are not the head, not the tail. When God glorifies you, the Lord becomes your shepherd and you shall not lack. When God glorifies you. So, beloved, all, all I'm saying is don't trip. It's for your good. Amen. Everything that you've gone through, don't trip. It was for your good. Amen. That, that, that car accident almost took you out, don't trip. It was for your good. That, that drug that you was drinking and, and smoking, don't trip. 
It's okay. It was for your good. Yeah, they don't like you no more. They, they kick it you out. They, they, they chastise you. They, they talk about don't Don't want Trent. <laughs> it's for your good. Yeah. You know, that bad relationship you was in. And he, he beat you. He talked about you. He spent all your money. They treat you wrong. And she did you wrong. Don't, don't trip. It's for your good. You know, because God is, God is trying to do is change some things in your life. He's trying to predestine you and trying to get you to understand that you've already been predestined. You've already have a destiny that has been predetermined and because it's been predetermined, his word will never return to him for it because his word will never return to him for it. It has to come to pass. So if he predestined you for greatness, then you want to be great. Why? Because all those bad things God turned. Come on, let's put our hands up. When you, when you go to work tomorrow and the folk acting crazy to you, just smell it until it's about being good. Just smile at being good. Just, just smile at being good. What's so good, God? Good. That, that, why? Why? Because they ain't going to understand that everything is going to turn and work. Good. And, and, and so you ain't got to trip no more. You ain't got to get an attitude. You ain't got to use the words that you know you've been using that you shouldn't be using. Don't trip. It's for your Give God the glory in this place. And God, uh, everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm so happy. I'm just, I don't know about y'all, but I'm just, I ain't tripping over bad stuff. I ain't allowing that to get me all upset. And I can't sleep, and I'm sitting up all night worrying and getting all mad and flustered and all that. Look, good. That's that's my response to all that stuff. Good. Amen. You want to cuss me out? Good. You want to cut y'all? Good. Why? Because God is going to flip that thing. Amen. And every time when God flipped that thing, you became great, and your enemy became less. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, the Israelites, when they was in the desert and they had to cross the sea, that bad thing. Uh, uh, Pharaoh's army was coming against them. That bad thing was about to divide, but God flipped that thing and they, they, they crossed over the river on dry land. But when the bad thing got to the river, it became a no thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. That bad thing is about to be an eye in your life. Amen. God is good. Good, good, good. Amen. Hallelujah. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, today is the day. Don't don't trip no more. Don't allow the, the devil to trip you out. Don't allow him to mess you up to think that you're not deserving to be saved or that you can't be saved. God said all things will work together. Amen. He wants to be your Savior. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He paid that debt for us. We don't have to pay it anymore. Yes. So all things can work together. So if you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need him to, him to be your personal Savior. Today is your day. If you need him to join the church, I'm just out here. I'm the Savior. I'm just out here. I'm, I just need to feel like I'm part of a family yes. that's going to love me because I need some things to turn around to be good. All things work together. Amen. 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 Work together. I just need to be a part of a family. Amen. 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 Uh, let me say this: a car, a garage was made for a car. The whole purpose of a garage is for a car to be, yes. in, be in there out of the elements because Amen. the elements would ruin uh, the outside, outside texture, the look of the car. God said, I loved you so much that I created a church to protect you out of the elements Amen. of this world. Because I don't want you to start looking like the dirty world, but I want you to always shine. Yes. We Amen. should be here as a family. You should be a part of a church. A part of a church that believes in Jesus Christ. A part yes. of a church that preaches the Bible. Yes. And that loves you. There's no perfect church. I'm searching for that perfect church. Although we found a church in Orlando that calls itself the perfect church. Amen. Amen. 
But I was told a long time ago, well, if I ever find the perfect church, don't go in there because you'll mess it up. So I don't want to mess up the church. Hallelujah. But I believe New Grace Worship Center is the greatest church on this side of heaven because of the people in this church. Thirdly, if you need prayer, Lord, I just need to be prayed with. I need to be undergirded. I need to stand with some folks that's going to pray with me, that's going to believe with me, because uh, I need some things to turn. Uh, not next week, not next year, but I need some things to turn today. As I walk out this building, I need some stuff turning. Amen. If that's you, this is your opportunity to link up with some prayer warriors that's going to pray with you. That's going to undergird you. Uh, for the Bible says when two or three gather together on one accord, he will be in the midst. We want God to be in the midst of our bad things. Yes. So he can turn and make it a good thing. Hallelujah. If you need Jesus Christ, if you need to join the church, you'd like to join the church, or if you need prayer, today is your day. If you're watching us from afar, and this message has inspired you to make a change in your life, first I'm asking that you like our page, like our channel, and then comment down at the bottom that you've been saved or that you've been touched. And if you need prayer, leave us your email address and we'll send you some instruction to connect with us. You can go to our website, newgraceworshipcenter.com or newgracewc.com. Click on the prayer request button and we'll make sure that we'll pray for you and we'll undergird you. Because we believe in being a family. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate our new baby. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that God is excited. The angels are strong. Amen. The child has come home. We are so happy. I'm excited and I'm pleased and honored to be your pastor and know that your family is here for you. And we just want to love on you. Whatever we can do, we gonna do it. And I want everybody to know. One thing I want to do is I want to uh, I want to institute a, a something new here. I want one of our current members, Amen, to be a mentor to her, Amen. amen. I want somebody to come stand, come stand. It's gonna agree. Say I'm gonna make sure that no matter what happens, I know what's going on with her. If she don't come. I'm going to find out, and I'm going to report. Amen. You think of me? We're going to make sure that we understand. See, we, we, we believe in getting y'all in your business. Not because we want to expose your business, but because we love you. And your business is our business, and we want to make sure that it's all turned for its good. Amen. And so we love you, and I'm just excited to make sure we get us some papers and paperwork we have for you to fill out. If you go with our elders and our uh, ministerial staff, they'll make sure that they get you all taken care of. Um, if you can leave the kids here, we're going to love on our new, our new children. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 As we prepare for communion, amen, I'm going to ask that you uh, touch inside of your heart. I want you to pray that God reveals to you any fault in you, anything that you've been holding on, any unforgiveness you've been holding on to. But just say, Lord, I just want to be forgiven. And Lord, I'm just asking that you just release me for, for the spirit of unforgiveness because I understand that if I forgive, then I can be forgiven. And so, Lord, I forgive every area, any all, anybody that has come against me, I forgive them. If that's you, pray it to yourself. Let God reveal those things to you. It's a very dangerous place to live in unforgiveness. Amen. And so I just say, simply, you don't have to, it doesn't require you to go and deal with the people, to allow them to continue. It just simply says, I forgive them so that I can be forgiven. 
Amen. As our deacons and elders come and prepare for our, our uh, communion, we want to make sure that we set our minds right, we set our love right, and that we believe that we did this not for us, but for the blood. Thank you right now as we prepare for the communion service. We prepare our hearts and our minds for what you have done in us. We, we don't take the sacrifice that you made lightly, but we do this in remembrance of what you gave, what you suffered for us, so that we may be forgiven. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you. And we ask and be mindful that we ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us for just not doing what we're supposed to do. Forgive us for tripping out over those bad things, knowing that you will turn it into a good thing. And Father God, now prepare the heart of the receiver of your communion. As our elders pray, allow them to feel your presence in Jesus' name. Father God, we just thank you right now for the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the new covenant that was made through your death. Father, we thank you that you so loved us that you gave us your only way to send us to sacrifice. And that we do do this every day we see you, Father. And for this we say thank you, Lord. We just thank you all for all praise. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, also, and likewise, now we thank you for allowing us to come to your table. And remember what the sacrifice that you made on our behalf. This is our appreciation, and we thank you, and we love you as we take this communion, this holy communion, in this ceremony in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone is standing. We ask that you come forth in this. No fashion, just come and receive your communion. We ask that you wait until we all can take it as a fact. You can come now. The first layer will release the wafer and represents the bread that Jesus broke. The second layer will release the juice that represents the blood that Christ shed on Calvary. the night that Jesus Christ was going to be betrayed. During in supper, he took the loaf of bread and he broke it after giving thanks. He broke it and he said, this is my body that will be broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, and in the same manner, at the end of supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks over the cup, he said, This is my cup of the new covenant that I give unto you. Drink all of it in remembrance of me. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord, for your communion. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for all that it represents. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, leave, let us not leave your word behind. 
Lord, as we remember that all things work together for the good. So that no matter what happens in our lives, we know that God is working it out for our good. Now, Jesus, we ask that you enter into our new sister, undergird her, Lord, and help us celebrate her and help her feel welcome in this place. And Lord, increase us as we increase our will for you. Give it to us according to our faith, Lord, that we may live as, as you called us and as predestined us to live. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, we never leave your sight. But forever in your presence, in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now, help three people and tell them that you love them. Amen. Everything has changed since the morning. Thank <laughs> you. 